Hi, Rabbi Yisrael Bernath here. Today I want to talk about the structure of the soul. Each one of us have not just one, but two souls. So let's get to know them. The first soul is responsible for animating our bodies. And it's called the animal soul. It's the soul that we sense. It's the soul that we feel all the time. It doesn't mean that it's literally an animal or that we are literally animals, God forbid. This is just the name that describes its inner essence. The inner essence of the animal soul is animalistic. It's driven by physical needs, by physical desires. Animals primarily worry only about themselves. They spend most of their time working on the material, on physical things, on eating, on sleeping, on doing things that just make them feel good. So an animal soul's focus is itself. It sees itself as the center of its universe, or for that matter, the center of the universe. And therefore, it believes that everything exists for it, and it deserves everything. Now, sometimes this nature is crude. It's expressed outright in words. It's expressed outright in actions and without any sugarcoating. And other times it acts more subtly with tact and without brazenness. But either way, the nature of the animal soul being narcissistic, of the animal soul being selfish is always present. So in our language today, we would associate the soul, the animal soul with the ego. The animal soul drives a person to be primarily concerned with themselves, to be narcissistic, to act out of self-interest. So I think it may be that it's harsh to say such a thing because what would we answer if we take an honest look at ourselves and we ask, would I do something for someone else before I do it for myself? Am I willing to give to others even if I get nothing out of it? I know it's a really difficult question. And I know at first glance, of course, of course, I would give to others without getting anything out of it. Of course, I would do something for someone else, not even thinking of what to get in return. But is it true? Would you really do it? When confronted with it, do you calculate? And I'm not talking about consciously calculate, even subconsciously calculate. Are you willing to sacrifice for other people without receiving money, without receiving honor, without receiving even the satisfaction of your efforts. And here's another option. Test yourself by trying to go an entire day without saying the words me or I. Maybe try to even spend a conversation without saying the words me or I, without thinking about yourself, without it coming back to yourself. Today, narcissism is so embedded in our society. It's so much part of the makeup of who we are and, and everything we do. So to start saying, well, oh, I'm going to be humble and I'm going to take myself out of it and I don't have an animal soul. Who are you kidding? The old uh, Hasidic masters would say, Anar nar that a fool only fools themselves. So without fooling ourselves, today we have to take a look at the animal soul within us. We have it. It's nothing to be ashamed of. 
God gave it to us the same way he gave us the other part of our soul. And we'll talk about that soon. So we're not ashamed of it, but we have to hone it. We have to know it. We have to make sure that we uh, keep it in check. So the first thing when we talk about the soul is just identifying it and saying, yes, yes, I have an animal soul. My animal soul is selfish. My animal soul has a narcissistic tendency. I like to do things for some kind of gain or some kind of return. And just acknowledging that allows the first step to be able to say, okay, now that I acknowledged it, well, what am I going to do about it? And so what I want you to do now is just spend time and acknowledge it. Acknowledge this part of who you are, because it's not the only part of who you are, but it is a primary part of who you are, because the animal soul is dominant within us from the time that we're born. It's strong. Actually, the animal soul, according to the Alter Rebbe and Tanya, resides in the left ventricle of the heart. The left ventricle of the heart pumps the blood to the entire body. And that's how it physically, through the blood and through the bloodstream, it has the ability to have mastery over the person. And so it's going to take a tremendous amount of effort and a trend, tremendous amount of work to be able to change that, to be able to say, I'm not a narcissist. I'm not only in it for myself. I have some kind of altruistic quality to me. But we can't even begin to say that. We can't even begin to have this conversation if we don't acknowledge it. So in this step of understanding the structure of our souls and understanding the structure of the animal soul, Today, it's just about acknowledging it exists. And there are narcissistic tendencies to it. There are selfish elements to it. And that's my thought for today. Don't worry, I'll be back and we have a lot more to talk about.